Hey everybody, this is Mr. Tui from EmptyCollegePrep.com and today I want to address the properties of exponents. I have a student who, uh, who bought my TSI Math crash course who uh, sent me this question from some of her prep work and, and she had some questions about the properties of exponents, specifically negative exponents. So I want to address that today. And, um, and before we answer the question though, I, I want to talk about properties of exponents in general, again specifically negative exponents. So I'm going to start with uh, an example of, uh, of negative exponents here. Let's say we have 2 to the power of negative 3. 2 to the power of negative 3. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. So a um, uh, negative exponent means basically we're going to take the inverse here of 2 to the power of 3. And the inverse means you flip the numerator and denominator. So um, first, let's talk about what 2 to the power of 3 would be. 2 to the power of 3 is, is 8, right? Because 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2. So this is 8, all right? Because it means 2 times self, 3 times. Um, so the inverse of that, again, we have a negative exponent here. The inverse of 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 1 over <laughs> 2 to the power of 3 which is the same as 1 over 8. Okay. Um, so again, it just means you're taking the inverse of whatever it's, you know, is being raised to that, that particular power. Um, and the more, it works the exact same way with exponents, or with, uh, with variables as well. So if we had like x to the power of negative 3, what would that look like? Well, again, it just means the inverse of x to the power of 3, right? x to the power of 3 is just x to the power of 3, or you could also express it as as uh, x to the power of 3 over 1, right? Anything you divide by 1 is itself. So again, we're taking the inverse of that. You're flipping the numerator denominator. So the inverse of uh, x to the power of 3 is 1 over x to the power of 3. Okay. So let's address this, this question here um, in particular, which is... Um, We've got x to the power of negative 5 times y divided by y to the power of 3, all raised to the power of negative 1. Okay? Let's start by addressing that uh, to the power of negative 1 deal, right? I mean, anything to the power of 1, right, that we're just positive, anything to the power of regular 1 is itself, right? So, um, but this is, this is the power of negative 1, right? So we're still taking the inverse of uh, the terms in parentheses, but we don't have to change them because it's the power of negative one. If it raised the power of negative two, then we'd have to take the inverse and then square it. So let's just raise the power of negative one, we're just flipping the numerator and denominator. So to start, let's just flip the numerator and denominator here um, with the fraction in parentheses. So that's gonna give us y to the power of three over x to the power of negative five times y. All right, but we got to simplify this, okay? And um, let's start by combining some like terms. Let's combine those y's. And uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. I want to start by just kind of explaining. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to start with the with the simpler way. How about that? And I'm going to take this y to the power of three, right here, and I'm going to express that as y times y times y, okay? Because y to the power of 3 means y times itself 3 times, which is what you see right there on the screen, okay? And that's still being divided by x to the power of negative 5 times y, okay? Now, if you know anything about canceling out terms in fractions, if you have the same thing in the numerator and in the denominator, you can start canceling stuff out. So if I had like a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator, right? I mean, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So anything times or you know, divided by itself just becomes 1. So same thing in the numerator, same thing in the denominator. They essentially cancel out, right? And so that's going to give us um, y squared over x to the power of negative 5. Uh, just that, right? Essentially, the, uh, the y essentially just becomes, it becomes 1 over 1, the same as y over y. All right. Um, there's another way to do this. There's a specific operation. I do want to address that, which may be helpful in some, some questions that you see. Um, as long as you have a like base, like you have here with y, as long as you have a like base, 
uh, you can combine exponents. Now you might look at this and say, well, I've got a, I've got y to the power of three, but there's no exponent here for this y term right here. And you don't see it there, but there's an implied one, right? Y is the same as y to the power of one, right? Because anything to the power of one is just itself, right? So x to the power of one is x, and y to the power of one is y, and two to the power of one is just two, and three to the power of one is three, etc. Um, so uh, for this operation, we're going to want to be aware of that implied one, right? So as long as you have um, a like base, like we said we have here with y, then you can combine these exponents by taking the exponent in the denominator and bringing it up to the numerator and subtracting it. So that's giving us y to the power of 3 minus 1, but 3 minus 1 is just 2, so that's going to equal y to the power of 2, but that's the same thing we got doing it the first way right here, y to the power of 2. Okay. All right, so um, still we need to simplify this here on the right-hand side a little bit more because we have a negative exponent here in x to the power of negative 5. And generally, when you see correct answer choices, you're not going to see negative exponents. They, they like to see, uh, they like you to have a positive exponents pretty much exclusively. So, you know, I think the simplest explanation here, and I debated a lot how to address this, is just if you see something in the denominator with a negative exponent, just know that you can put that in the numerator and turn the exponent positive. I, I, I think that's probably the simplest way to think about it. I'm going to try to explain why that's the case. But just know we could we could basically put that x to the power of negative 5, just put that in the numerator as x to the power of 5. So it would be y squared times x to the power of, of 5. But I, I want to explain why, why it works that way. So let me do that real quick. All right, so... Um, let's go back to thinking in terms of negative exponents in, in, in terms of the inverse of that term, right? So I could um, express this as y squared over uh, the inverse of x to the power of 5, which is 1 over x to the power of 5. It's the exact same thing right there, right? For the same reason that I explained at the very beginning of the video. Those two are equal. Okay. All right, so now we've got uh, y squared being divided by another fraction, which is annoying and it looks complicated, but but here we have to address the properties of fractions, right, and how to divide by another fraction. And when you divide by fractions, uh, you are doing the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. And um, I'm, I'm going to show you why real quick. I, I, I do this to clarify, not to complicate. Again, if you just want to think in terms of like, okay, I can take, oh, I've got a negative exponent here. I can just put that x power of negative 5. I can just put that in the numerator as x power of 5. That's great. If you want to keep it simple that way, please do. Do whatever works, my goodness. But um, I like I like uh, understanding, at least try, <laughs> trying to understand why things are the way they are in math. So let's do that here. So um, I'm going to multiply this. Well, I'm going to take, so when we, when we divide by fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over x to the power of 5. And the reciprocal of 1 over x to the power of 5 is, is um, x to the power of 5 over 1. And um, there's, there's, which is going to give us what we were trying to get at in the first place y squared times x to the power of 5. 